Welcome to the shortened benefits presentation for new UW-Madison employees eligible for the Wisconsin Retirement System, WRS. Today, we will talk about Wisconsin Retirement System, WRS, health insurance, supplemental insurance, like dental and vision, life and disability insurance. About this presentation, Benefits Specialists in University Housing, Facilities Planning and Management, and the Office of Human Resources worked with Cultural Linguistic Services to create this presentation. All figures are for 2024. Check updated costs and coverage every year. Once again, welcome to UW-Madison and to this benefits presentation. Let's get started. Let's begin by talking about the 30-day deadline. You must apply for most benefits within 30 days of your start date. If you don't, you risk not being able to enroll in your benefits. If you apply on time, most benefits start the first day of the month after your start date. Ask about exceptions. In order to find your enrollment deadline on a calendar, find your start date. Count 30 days from that date you must apply for benefits on or before the 30th date. Example, if you start April 1st, you must apply on or before May 1st. If you don't enroll within 30 days, can you enroll in the future? For life insurances, disability insurance, income continuation or ICI, no, probably not. For health, dental, vision, flexible spending, accident insurance, may be during annual enrollment or life event, 30 days after loss of similar coverage, marriage, birth, or adoption. Accidental death and dismemberment, 403B and 457B. Yes, enroll anytime during your eligible employment. So what is Annual Benefits Enrollment, or AIB? It is the only time you can change most of your benefits without a life event or employment change. You need to re-enroll in some benefits every year. AIB usually happens between September and October. The changes to your benefits will be effective on January 1st of the next year. And what are life events? You can enroll in or change some benefits within 30 days of a life event. For example, marriage, divorce, birth or adoption of a child, address change to a new county, loss of other coverage. If you experience a life event, connect with a benefit specialist to help you with the process. The first benefit we'll share is the retirement plans. We have three retirement options. Wisconsin Retirement System is mandatory for all eligible employees. The other two plans are optional, UW's 403B and Wisconsin's 457B. You can sign up for the two optional plans at any time, not only during new hire onboarding. The Wisconsin Retirement System, WRS, is a pension or retirement program. Eligible state employees must contribute by Wisconsin state law. Contributions are automatically taken from your paychecks before taxes. For 2024, the employee contribution is 6.9% of your pay and the employer matches that 6.9%. There are two optional retirement plans, the UW's 403B Supplemental Retirement Program, SRP, and the state's Wisconsin Deferred Compensation, 457B. You can choose to not sign up or sign up for one plan or both plans at any time, not only during new hire onboarding. Both plans let you contribute money from your paycheck into a retirement account, in addition to your Wisconsin Retirement System contribution. Both offer pre or post tax contributions. There are no minimum contribution, 
but there is a maximum. There is no employer match with either of these plans. Now let's talk about your health insurance. We'll look at your options for state group health insurance, dental benefits, and health savings account. Opt out incentive. You can waive health insurance, for example, if you have other coverage and it is not covered under the State of Wisconsin Group Health Insurance Program. If you choose the incentive on time and are approved, you get $166 per month on your paycheck. This is taxable income, not Wisconsin Retirement System income. It does not affect your retirement annuity. You must opt in every year for the incentive during the annual benefits enrollment, or AIP. When does my state group health, SGH, begin? For faculty, academic staff, and limited, insurance begins on the first of the month on or following the first day of hire. For university staff, you can choose the date your insurance begins. Let's look at the options with a couple of examples. University staff, you choose the date your insurance begins. Option A, first of the month on or following hire. Date of hire, January 1st, insurance begins January 1st. If you do not have two months of WRS state service, you pay full premiums at first. Date of hire, January 1st, SGH begins, you pay full costs, January 1st. UW's employer contribution begins after two full calendar months of WRS state service, March 1st. Or date of hire, January 9th, SGH begins, you pay the full cost, February 1st. UW's employer contribution begins after two full month calendar months of WRS state service, April 1st. Option B, first of the month after your first two full months of WRS state service. Date of hire, January 1st. SGH begins with employer contribution, March 1st, or date of hire, January 9th. SGH begins with employer contribution, April 1st. You will not have health insurance the first two months of employment with this option. Your insurance begins when UW's employer contribution begins the month following your first two full calendar months of WRS state service. Most employees select option B. You should contact a benefit specialist for enrollment help. You choose between four health plans the It's Your Choice Health Plan or Blue Plan. Wisconsin-based, only use in-network providers, no coverage out of network, only emergency or urgent care. The Access Plan or Yellow Plan, nationwide network, use in and out of network providers, less coverage out of network, pay more out of pocket. The High Deductible Health Plan, or RED Plan, must open Health Savings Account, HSA, Wisconsin-based, only use in-network providers, no coverage outside of network, only emergency or urgent care. And the Access High Deductible Health Plan, or Green Plan, must open Health Savings Account, HSA, nationwide network, use in and out of network providers, less coverage out of network, pay more out of pocket. In all the plans, preventative services are covered 100%. You pay no money for specific preventative services from in-network providers like routine annual checkups and specific screenings for illness and specific prescriptions. To learn more, go to the healthcare.gov website and search preventative. Here are the monthly premiums for each of the state group health plans. 
The table shows individual and family options with or without uniform dental. These are your premiums if you are eligible for regular employer contributions towards health. You pay more if you are new university staff, not faculty, academic staff, or limited appointees, and start health insurance before you have two months of WRS state service. Work less than 50% time, including faculty, academic staff, and limited appointees. Hold a single university staff temporary appointment. Where do I learn more about state group health? Where are the network's phone numbers? I have more questions about coverage. In, in these websites, you can learn more and check if your provider is in the network you plan to choose for your health insurance. When you select a network, you stay in it for the rest of the year. You could only change your network if you have a life event or during the annual benefit enrollment period. The change is effective at the start of the next year. Do you need coverage outside Wisconsin? The access plans give you nationwide coverage and more flexibility when choosing medical providers with a higher monthly premium than the blue and red plans. If you are not sure if you need nationwide access, ask your benefits specialist in your department or the Office of Human Resources if you should choose the access plan network. Let's talk about some details of the blue and yellow plans. An office visit copay is a cost you pay each time you visit the doctor. Copays do not go toward deductibles. The table shows the copays for the It's Your Choice Health Plan and the Access Plan. The copay for eligible preventative visits is zero. You pay a $15 copay for primary care visits and a $25 for specialty care visits. Emergency room visits have a copay of $75, which is waived if you are admitted to the hospital. In these plans, you pay 100% for x-rays, diagnostic labs, and surgical procedures covered and in network until you meet your deductible for the year. After you meet your deductible, Insurance pays some of the cost for these services for the rest of the year. The blue and yellow plans have lower deductibles with higher premium costs. For the It's Your Choice traditional plan, that is the blue plan, your annual deductible is single $250, family $500. This means that if one person reaches $250, coinsurance starts paying some of the cost for that person even if the family has not reached $500. When the whole family has spent $500, the coinsurance starts paying some of the cost for everyone. So let's talk about coinsurance. If one person meets their $250 deductible for the rest of the calendar year, for medical care covered and in network, like x-rays, diagnostic labs, and surgical procedures, that person pays 10%, the insurance pays 90%. For durable medical equipment like wrist braces or crutches, that person pays 20% and the insurance pays 80%. That person will continue paying office visit copays. If one person meets their $1,250 medical out-of-pocket limit or OOPL, that person pays $0 for office visits, medical care, and durable medical equipment covered and in network for the rest of the calendar year, and the insurance pays 100%. For the traditional blue plan, your annual OOPL is single $1,250, family $2,500. This means that if one person reaches $1,250, Coinsurance starts paying 100% for that person, even if the family has not reached $2,500. When the whole family has spent $2,500, the coinsurance starts paying 100% of the costs for everyone. The table shows the co-pays or coinsurance for different levels of prescriptions. 
You can use the SurveView mail order pharmacy service to receive your drugs at home and save on the cost of level one and two drugs. In the Navitas formulary, you can find the drugs you use and their level. If you meet the pharmacy out of pocket limit for a drug level for the rest of the calendar year, you pay nothing or 0% for your other in-network covered prescriptions in that level, and the insurance company will pay 100% of their cost. The table shows the OOPL for different prescription levels with individual and family plans. This overview shows how coverage works with the traditional plans. The top part shows the copays and insurance for prescriptions, which are separate from the medical cost. The bottom part shows your office visit copays, which do not count for the deductible, but do count for your medical out of pocket limit or OOPL. Your deductible, the medical co-insurance that starts paying some of your costs after you reach the deductible, your out of pocket limit. If the co pays plus cost for services you paid reach the OOPL, your insurance pays 100% for most covered costs for the rest of the calendar year. Let's look at the high deductible health plans. With the HDHP and Access HDHP plans, you pay less every month because you have lower monthly premiums and you will pay for all services out of pocket until you meet your annual deductible. Insurance does not pay for your services until you meet your deductible unless the service is preventative. Because of that, these plans include a health savings account or HSA to help you offset the costs of medical, dental, or vision expenses. You can put money in your HSA in addition to the money that UW contributes, $62.50 a month for the single plan and $125 a month for the family plan. How does the annual deductible work in the HDHP plans? At first, you pay 100% of the full negotiated cost for your non-preventative covered in-network prescriptions office visits, tests, and surgical procedures. After you meet the deductible, the insurance begins to pay a share of your bills and you pay office visit copays, prescription copays, and coinsurance until you reach the out-of-pocket limit. And how does the out-of-pocket limit work in the HDHP plans? If you meet your out-of-pocket limit, OOPL, for the rest of the calendar year, you pay nothing, 0% for in-network covered office visits, medical care, durable medical equipment, and prescription drugs. And the insurance pays 100%. For the HDHP plans, your annual OOPL is single, $2,500, family, $5,000. If you have a family coverage, one person in the family could reach the $5,000 and meet the family's OOPL. Remember, if you choose a high deductible health plan, you must also enroll in a HSA or health savings account. If you enroll online, the HSA enrollment starts automatically. If you turn in physical paperwork for the HDHP, you will need a paper application for the HSA. You must also pass the Customer Identification Process, CIP. Optum may email you to request information and documentation to open your account, and you must respond within 90 days. The UW cannot help you with this process. Here are some key reminders about the HDHPs. The IRS sets the guidelines for high deductible health plans. 
you must include information about these plans when doing your annual taxes. You must keep documentation, receipts, explanation of benefits, billing statements. You must enroll and be approved for the health savings account. This overview shows how coverage works with the high deductible health plans. In these plans, prescriptions, office visits, medical care, and equipment are grouped together. You pay 100% for all of them until you reach your annual deductible, which is $1,600 for the single plan and $3,200 for family. When you meet your deductible, you start paying copays and coinsurance for your prescriptions, copays for your office visits, and medical coinsurance for other covered services. After that, if you meet the medical out-of-pocket limit or OOPL of $2,500 for the single plan and $5,000 for family, then your insurance pays 100% for prescriptions and covered costs for the rest of the calendar year. The HDHP plans come with a pre-tax health savings account where you can save money for large medical expenses. UW contributes towards the annual deductible to your HSA, $62.50 a month for single and $125 a month for the family plan. This was a general summary of the plans. If you have questions, you can ask them at a follow-up benefits meeting. Every health plan has a with dental option that costs more than the health plan without dental. If you choose with dental, you pay $3 more per month for single coverage and $10 more per month for family. This adds uniform dental provided by Delta Dental, which covers routine cleanings, x-rays, and fillings up to $1,000 per person each calendar year. It does not cover major or restorative care. For example, root canals, crowns, bridges, dentures, or implants. You stay enrolled each year unless you cancel during open enrollment. You cannot cancel the plan at other times without a qualifying event. Uniform Dental matches your health insurance coverage. That is, if you elect family health insurance with dental, you will be enrolled in family dental coverage. Now let's talk about the supplemental dental insurance that we offer through Delta Dental. There are four coverage levels you can enroll. Yourself, yourself and your spouse, yourself and your child or children, or your entire family. The first column in the table is for the preventative plan. If you choose your health plan with Uniform Dental, this is the preventative plan that is included. This is also the plan that you would select if you didn't want health insurance but wanted to enroll in basic dental. The select and select plus plans are supplemental. Perhaps your spouse needs a root canal and you only need to enroll them instead of your entire family. That can keep the premium costs down. You can enroll as a new hire or you can enroll or drop coverage at open enrollment. For example, if you have dental work coming up for the next year, you can pick the coverage for the next year and then drop it at the next open enrollment once you've received the service. This table shows the three plans with their deductibles, maximum benefits and covered services. For example, the select plan covers 50% of the cost of implants and oral surgeries up to $1,000 per person. The Select Plus plan covers 60% of the costs of implants and 80% of the cost of oral surgeries, up to $2,500 per person. We have vision insurance through Delta Vision as well. Here are the premiums for vision insurance. Like with dental, you choose who you want to cover. For example, 
If you and your spouse wear contacts or glasses, you can choose to only enroll the two of you instead of the entire family. You can enroll as a new hire or you can enroll or drop coverage at open enrollment. If you have vision health expenses coming up for the next year, you can pick the coverage for the next year and then drop it at the next open enrollment once you've received the service. This table shows the coverage and co-pays for the Delta Vision benefits. Another benefit is flexible spending accounts. There are different optional flexible spending accounts administered by Optum Financial. You can open a health FSA if you select the traditional health insurance plan. It is an account where you can put money for eligible dental, medical, and vision expenses. If you choose the high deductible health plan, you must also enroll in the health savings account, HSA, like we mentioned earlier. You also have the option to enroll and contribute to a limited purpose FSA to save even more towards eligible medical, vision, and dental expenses not covered by your health insurance. There is also a dependent daycare FSA. You can send money from your paychecks to your FSA and, depending on the type of FSA you have, use it for certain medical, dental, or dependent daycare costs. The advantage with these accounts is that you don't have to pay taxes on the money you are putting away. For example, if you pay 25% tax on $200, you are only receiving $150 in your paycheck. If you take that $200 and put it in an FSA, that amount is not subject to taxes and you can use it all to pay for eligible expenses. If you know you have upcoming expenses you can plan for, you can consider this benefit. This table shows the eligible expenses and dependents for each type of FSA, plus the minimum and maximum contributions and possible carryover. For the dependent daycare FSA, the maximum annual contribution is $5,000 per household if you are single or married and filing jointly. If you are married and file taxes separately, the maximum is $2,500 for each spouse. You should note that only $610 may roll over to the next year for the health and limited purpose FSAs. That means if you put in $1,000 in this year and you didn't use any of it, you could only roll over the maximum of $610. So be careful when you select your amount for your FSA. There is no rollover with dependent daycare. You must spend all the money within the same year or you'll use lose it. If you enroll in an FSA, you should know that if you don't substantiate your claims, they will be denied. This means that you must provide documents that prove you or your family had an eligible expense when Optum requests them. If you cannot provide the documentation on time, Optum will deny your claim. If you used your debit card to pay a claim that gets denied later, you must repay the FSA directly. Or if you don't repay to Optum directly, the amount will be deducted from your paycheck. Two final reminders for managing your FSAs, if you choose to enroll in them. The IRS sets the guidelines for flexible spending accounts and you must keep documentation receipts, explanation of benefits, billing statements. You will need to monitor emails or the Optum app for any information they request and submit it on time. Next, let's talk about income continuation or ICI. This is short and long-term disability insurance. ICI is an optional income replacement plan. 
it helps you replace your salary if you need to be out of work for a long time. It pays up to 75% of your average monthly salary if you meet plan requirements and cannot work because you are disabled, ill, or injured. A short-term disability is when you're unable to perform the duties of your job for 12 months or less. A long-term disability is when you're unable to work in any substantially gainful activity for which you are qualified. ICI Disability. ICI pays you after you complete an elimination period, are disabled for a specific amount of time, and you use up all your sick leave hours. University staff, you must wait 30 days or use all your sick leave up to 130 days, whichever is longer. UW faculty and academic staff, you must complete the elimination period you chose, 30 days, 90 days, 125 days, or 120, 180 days, or use all your sick leave up to 130 days, whichever is longer. Your work unit and human resources will help you through the process. There are three options to enroll in ICI disability. One, now as a new employee in your first 30 days, Two, if you do not enroll as a new employee, you may later receive an email invitation saying that you qualify because you earned and saved sick leave. Three, through evidence of insurability or EOI, which you can do at any time, but there is no guarantee of enrollment, you may be denied. You can ask questions about ICI at any follow-up benefits meeting. You cannot enroll in income continuation insurance during annual benefits enrollment or qualifying life events. We also have life insurance. There are two options for life insurance. You can enroll in none, one, or both optional life insurance plans. You select your level of coverage and that is the amount the life insurance will pay your, to your beneficiaries if you pass away. Your premium depends on the level of coverage, age, and income. This is one of only a few opportunities to enroll in the life insurances. The other opportunities are if you experience a life event, for example, marriage, you may apply for one unit of state group life insurance. If you apply through evidence of insurability, which has no guarantee of enrollment, so you may be denied coverage. Consider this when evaluating your life insurance options. Now, let's talk about accidental death and dismemberment and accident insurance. Let's look at your options for accidental death and dismemberment and accident insurance. You can enroll in none, one, or both. You can also enroll your spouse and or child or children. The UW's Accidental Death and Dismemberment, AD and D, with Zurich provides benefits if you die due to an accident or suffer a permanent impairment like paralysis or loss of limb. You can enroll in this plan at any time. The state of Wisconsin's accident plan with Securian pays cash if you are injured or die due to a covered accident. You can enroll within 30 days of your hire date or during the annual benefits enrollment period. For both plans, you must file your own claim with the insurer if you suffer an accident. Let's start with accidental death and dismemberment insurance. The table shows the coverage and benefits if you have an accident that results in a loss of life, one or more limbs, the use of certain limbs, sight, speech, or hearing. The table also lists some additional benefits of this insurance. The first table shows the monthly employee cost and family cost depending on the benefit amount you chose. The employee cost starts at 65 cents per month for a $25,000 benefit up to $13 for a $500,000 benefit. The family cost starts at $1 per month for a $25,000 benefit up to 
$20 for a $500,000 benefit. The second table shows the percentage of your benefit amount that your dependents get with the family plan. Now for accident insurance. The plan pays you cash if you have an accident and make a claim. Coverage includes concussions, dislocations, lacerations, fractures, x-rays, emergency care, hospitalization, surgeries, follow-up care, support care, accidental death and dismemberment up to $100,000. This table shows you the monthly cost for each level of coverage for you and your family. If other family members are employed by UW or the state of Wisconsin, each eligible employee can only be covered as an employee or dependent, not both. If you have a life event like marriage, adoption, loss of coverage, divorce, etc., please talk to your division or department's HR representatives to make any changes to your benefits as soon as possible within 30 days of the life event. If you have any questions about your benefits or comments about this presentation, contact your department's HR office or email benefits at OHR dot W-I-S-C dot E-D-U. To request translation or interpretation services, call Cultural Linguistic Services at area code 608-265-2257. Thank you and have a nice day.